time lapse, motion lapse, hyperlapse. Doing any of these is very simple to do with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, unlike other cameras where it's a little bit more involved. It's almost on autopilot. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'll show you the basics. And then at the end, I'll show you a few advanced features that you can do to improve your footage. I'm gonna have chapters set up. So if you wanna skip right to the one of the functions, go ahead, but let's get started. And we're gonna start with time-lapse. Turn your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 on, hit the icon at the bottom left, and that opens up a video menu. Scroll all the way to the left, and at the very end, you'll see time-lapse. Now, if you've done hyperlapse or motion lapse, it will say hyperlapse or motion lapse. All three of them are, are nested inside that last function, which will say time lapse, hyperlapse, or motion lapse. Press on that to open up the menu. Now, you'll notice under time lapse there are some presets. There's crowds, clouds, sunset, and then custom. Even though I'm going to be doing clouds, I'm going to go into custom. So from custom, it'll say swipe up to set your parameters. Let's swipe up. And in this menu, you see the interval and the duration. So the interval is how often it's going to capture an image. I prefer to do for every four seconds, especially for clouds. So I'm gonna pick that. And then underneath, you'll see the duration. And that duration involves how long it's going to record for. And if you look in between interval and duration, it'll show you your video duration. So it might only be two seconds if you're going to record five minutes. You want to have your camera locked down. Put it on a tripod, get your framing set up, hit record, here's the result. So now let's move on to motion lapse. Instead of crowds, clouds, and sunsets, we now have left to right, that's what LTR is, right to left, and then custom. So that's the motion that the camera is going to make. But let's do a custom preset where we decide the start and the stop point. You'll be prompted, swipe up to set parameters. If you've done the time lapse, it's the same settings, the interval, of how often it's going to capture an image and the duration that it's going to record for. Now what we want to do is select our in and out points. So what you want to do is swipe down. You may notice a circle with a cross in the middle of it. That is where you're going to set your in and out points. So using either the joystick on the DJI Pocket 3 or the, D the joystick on the Mimo app. So you want to actually pan and tilt to where you want it to start. Hit that circle with the cross and you'll see a blue one in the upper right-hand corner. Once you have the camera lined up to where you want it to stop, hit the circle with the plus and that marks two. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's a play button, a triangle. That's a preview to show you where it's going to move. If you don't like any of the in and out points, next to the two blue markers, there's an X, you can just hit that and delete either of them. So you sit back, you have your coffee, read a book, and after five to 20 minutes, however long you're recording, you get your results. It was too bright outside to record the screen on here, so I'm just doing this to show you how you set the in and out parameters. Now let's get into hyperlapse. Unlike motion lapse or time lapse, you are actually moving the gimbal, whether you're holding it and walking or running, whether you have it mounted to a car or a bike, it's giving you that very sped up motion. When you select hyperlapse, you're gonna notice a difference in the menu from time-lapse and motion-lapse, you're gonna see rate. And the rate refers to how fast you want the motion-lapse to be. You have auto, times two, times five, times 10, 15, and 30. So one of the cool things about hyperlapse is you can lock the camera on an object. And in this case, I'm using the steeple of the church. All I have to do is double tap on my screen and the green square will show up around the object that I've selected. And it's not perfect. Uh, as you notice, as I'm walking, once the tree cuts in front of it, it loses its tracking. It's great if you wanna do the parallax effect of walking, locking onto a building or a structure, have that be centered and everything else moves around it. So now let's get into some of the advanced features of all three of these effects. So number one is going to be selecting your resolution and your frame rate. Now, by default, you might notice that it says it's at 1080 and 30 frames per second. What you wanna to do to change that 
is when you're inside the time-lapse or hyperlapse menu. In the upper right hand corner is where you'll see the resolution and the frame rate. Just tap on that. That'll open up the resolution and frame rate menu and you can change it from 1080 to 2.7K to 4K. You only have the option of 25 or 30 frames per second for time-lapse or motion-lapse. Once you have your parameter set before you actually hit record, swipe right on the Pocket 3's screen and open up the Pro menu. The reason for that is it's going to default to an automatic ISO and shutter speed setting. This is where you can get a little bit more control you can take it from auto to manual and select your ISO. If you're just doing a five or 10 minute time lapse of the clouds, there's not gonna be a lot of change in light, then I would select an ISO. If you're going to be going from light to shadow, especially if you're gonna be doing like a sunset, sunrise, or if there are storm clouds coming in and the light's going to change, what I'd recommend is selecting a range. You can do like 50 to 1600. And I would recommend 50 to 800 or 50 to 1600. Either one of those two is gonna be a safe range so that it'll compensate for, you know, if it gets too dark or too bright. For time-lapse and motion-lapse, I'm doing like I'm doing for video. So if I'm shooting at 25, I'm gonna pick 1 50th. By the same token, if you want to add more of a blur, you can lower your shutter speed. One. 25th is the lowest shutter speed that it will take. So it's not like you can do a, a super long exposure like you would on a DSLR, but still it'll add more blur to anything that's moving. And that's helpful in crowds if you want the people to almost seem invisible. Another feature is the option to not only record video, but to back up with JPEG or Cinema DNG files. So under the pro menu, you'll see where it says video. And if you click on that, it'll take you from video to video plus JPEG to video plus RAW. So if you're selecting video plus RAW, those RAW files are very large. Make sure you have enough space on your card for it. Another feature is a low battery mode. So when you're in the menu, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, a moon icon. So if you're doing sunset, where it's going to record for two hours, select that moon icon, and that's going to enter it into low battery mode. So while it's recording, it will shut the screen down, lower the brightness. It will do as much as it can, sort of like on your phone. When it goes into low battery mode, it just uses less power so that it can stay on for those two hours. Having an understanding of what these three functions do. Let's say it's a bright sunny day, there's no clouds, you're out in the middle of the field, there's nothing moving. Your time lapse isn't going to produce anything interesting because the idea is the camera's locked down, but things around it are moving and it's doing like a smooth fast forward motion with it. So it's ideal for clouds passing through, cars or people moving, uh, even water moving like a stream or you know something moving. Same thing with motion lapse. Yes, the camera's moving, but if nothing else is moving, it's just a pan. And hyperlapse is of course the opposite where it doesn't matter if things are moving because you're moving. Now, it certainly helps if things are moving while you're moving. Just about every camera that I have now uses it. Even my phone does time-lapse. So I'd like to know, are you using time-lapse or motion-lapse? What are your thoughts on hyperlapse? How do you use them? Was there anything that I missed that you think is important to this? Please let me know in the comments. Take care, everybody. Thanks.